you have watched the past few episodes, uh, you know that we're in Gettysburg and have been touring through the <laughs> jaw-dropping collection here at the Gettysburg Museum of History. We've seen all kinds of things from the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, from World War II, rare items from, uh, from Adolf Hitler, and uh, I wanted to save what is my personal favorite thing in this museum for last. If you're a fan of Band of Brothers and of the history of the 101st Airborne and Easy Company in particular, this is definitely one to watch to the end. If you have watched this channel for any amount of time, you know that we have visited uh, several of the sites that are tied in with Easy Company, which was, of course, made famous by the book and series Band of Brothers. Uh, obviously, the, the man who um, is the, the center of most of the attention, rightly so, with Easy Company is Dick Winters. Great study on, on leadership and uh, just character and, and all kinds of different things like that. Well, here at the museum, they have probably the best Dick Winters collection you will ever find. So the major Dick Winters collection is here and most of the items in these cases are from him and I'm going to take you through those items and basically what has happened since we got the Winters collection in 2016 is other items have come our way. Other family members of Easy Company and collectors who had Easy Company items have placed some of those items in our care. And our plan is to build a very large Easy Company Dick Winters exhibit uh, in, in next year. And so um, it started with the Dick Winters collection and I'm gonna go through a few items here. We have his college yearbook here with his picture. Uh, this is the map that he used in Paris when he, if you remember the scene where he goes on leave at Paris right before the Battle of the Bulge and this, this photo right here was taken of him. He's in the photo towards the left and then he gets called back, or well, he goes back and they end up going to the Battle of the Bulge. But that was the map he used. Um, this is a G43 German sniper rifle and it's in almost mint condition. He brought that home as a war trophy, you know, earlier we talked about war trophies. Major winners brought home a bunch of German guns and he sold them before or right, right after the book came out and they're scattered um, amongst the uh, collectors across the country but he saved a few of them and um, but anyway that's the G43 and he captured that in Cape Prune, Austria which is where they were um, after the war for occupation duty but it's just an amazing con uh, condition. Uh, another war trophy that that Major Winters took was these Falschenmager gloves. He took them from a soldier at the Battle of Carentan from a 5th uh, Falschenmager Regiment soldier. And there's a picture of him wearing a pair, the pair of uh, Falschenmager gloves there. Working our way down, one of the most amazing accounts of D-Day, in my opinion, is Winters uh, D-Day diary. And when he was wounded, at the Battle of Carentan, he actually sat down and wrote out his thoughts. And so you have a very fresh, first-hand account of what happened on D-Day and the Battle of Braycourt Manor. And he even drew a little map there, which is uh, done in uh, old fountain ink. And he used a typewriter and, and typed that out in an aid station in, uh, after the Battle of Carentan. You have the yard-long photo of Easy Company there. One of the best pieces, in my opinion, is Winner's 1911. That's, a, oh. that's his gun that he used through most of World War II. He did not have it with him at D-Day. Uh, the story is that he had two, um, and he left one in his footlocker. And uh, the one that he took with him, which was the newer model, um, this is the true 1911, uh, he lost with his other equipment. But he had another one in his, uh, his um, footlocker that he used throughout the war, and there's some photos of him uh, throughout World War II with a 45 on his hip. The knife back there is a British commando knife and that was a gift to winners from 
Lewis Nixon. It says LN2DW or yeah, 1943. So they were training with those weapons. Uh, a lot of the British commanders who were helping train them when they were in England used those and it was a real expensive weapon and Nixon being a, a, a pretty wealthy guy. Winters would never buy something like that, but he bought one for his friend, uh, Dick Winters. And uh, it's documented in some of the letters that we have. Uh, this is Dick Winters officer's ID. And it starts out as lieutenant and he crossed it out and, he, and it says major and he had that with him throughout the war. And it's an amazing piece. He, he put some kind of lamination on it and to think that he had that with him through most of his military career. Those are his dog tags. Those are the later version of the dog tags. Those are the ones he would have worn in combat. His wallet, his parachute jump uh, manual, some more of his insignia. Um, this is the Distinguished Service Cross that was given to him by General Bradley at a, at a ceremony um, in Normandy. So that's the DSC he got for his action at Braycourt Manor, if you've seen the series. His original jump certificate is back there. When he completed paratrooper school at Tacoa, the officers took jump school at Tacoa. The enlisted men took it later, but he was one of the first guys. In fact, he was one of the first guys out, or I think he was the first guy out, actually. And it was signed by uh, Colonel Sink. And then going down here, here's one of his uniforms, uh, or, or shirts, and there's some pictures of him wearing that same, or very similar uniform uh, at Birch's Garden up here, where he's wearing just a tie and shirt. And this is the iconic four-button Class A uniform that you see in this picture right here. This picture was taken in December of 1945 when he came home, uh, and his parents had him take a couple of photos. It was this one and this black and white version, but it is the same one that's in that photograph. And it's an iconic photo and it's an iconic uniform. And um, the other day I was asked a question, what's your favorite World War II item? And boy, that was a tough question, but <laughs> I, I think, I think that's going to be up there. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I just, you know, it, it just is such a phenomenal piece. I can see why. <laughs> there's his pants with his name, Lieutenant Win Winters in there, a pair of his pants. This is Infantry in Battle. That was one of his manuals and has his notes throughout. An amazing piece. Um, and we go over here. This is the um, jacket that he's wearing, wearing in f late 44 or mid uh, September of 44 up through the end. Um, he wore this during the Holland campaign. He sewed a, he had, he had a map case sewn in the back. It has extra pockets. It's very heavily modified. And he's wearing, we think, the same one in that picture, the famous iconic picture taken at Skrundelok in Holland. And then here is his B-15 jacket. Some of the officers of the 101st were able to get a hold of these aviator jackets and they wore them during the Battle of the Bulge. Um, so that's the bulk of the winter stuff except for the files you know the 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 files are amazing you know one of the things that we got were his or besides the hard artifacts were the files we have tons of paperwork and his photo albums and um you know we we published a book based on his letters called hang tough i hope you all get it and um, we're working on another book about his photo albums which will be out sometime next year so, um, you know, it's, it's a treasure trove of information. We thank God that Winter saved all this stuff because um, it, it created some of the best stories of World War II around. Here are a few more items in the Easy Company collection. Uh, this is the uniform of one of the guys by the name of Edward Bernat. Um, and then if you watched the series, the man who owned this piece of gear might be a little bit more familiar. Uh, this is the M42 jump jacket of Babe Heffron and also his medals. One thing that I do want to mention, uh, Eric, He's not just keeping this stuff to himself. He has a, a free museum uh, where people can come and experience and learn from it. And he also co-authored a book called Hang Tough, which contains a lot of the personal letters and things like that of Dick Winter. So you can kind of get a little bit more insight into the man through this book. And it has some awesome illustrations in it too. 
Um, but yeah, definitely a book to add to your library. Take a look at this. This is incredible. Uh, these are items that were recovered from the Bois Jacques. I think I'm saying that right. People gigged me whenever I did that episode because I called it the Bois Jacques, uh, but it's the, the Bois Jacques. Uh, but you can see here are like pieces of a 1911. Uh, here are some mess tins. Here's something that's really fascinating. Here are pieces of wood with bullets and shrapnel embedded in them. You can see here's a canteen that looks like it got nicked. Um, here are some dog tags that were recovered. Um, and then over here you can see some German relics that were covered from that same area. Unbelievable, all of the stuff that is here. we got Dick Winter's collection, as I said, other Easy Company stuff came our way, a lot, a lot of artifacts, and we now have artifacts or photographs or photo albums from over 30 members of Easy Company. It's, it's been amazing how this, how this has played out, but um, one of my favorites is Ronald Spears, who is the, a, another officer. Um, he originally started in C Company, was moved to Dog Company during D-Day, and then he ended up in headquarters, 2nd Battalion, and then eventually became commanding officer of Easy Company, and it's portrayed really well in the, in the book and the series. And a few years ago, uh, I was able to get a few of his items. I only have a few of the items out, but we have his, his Luger, his P-38, his um, Luftwaffe dagger that, uh, as a war trophy, and, and a bunch of his photos. There's his office, uh, officer ID and um, a lot of paperwork and photos and we have over a hundred original photos of him now. So uh, during lockdown, um, during the COVID pandemic, um, I decided to write my second book and it's an autobiography or a biography of Ronald Spears. And so that's what I did during lockdown with my co-author Jared. I brought him along. Um, he, he was my co-author on Hang Tough. And um, while writing this, I mean, it was such a fascinating story. I mean, he's portrayed as such a mystery man. Uh, the family decided to give me his medals as well. And we have not put these out yet, but these are Ronald Spears medals and, and, and insignia. And a lot of them are post-war, but the Purple Heart, the Silver Star, the Bronze Star are World War II. And then, of course, his 506 insignia. And we got his dog tag. and. Um, I was just blown away. I, I mean, um, they, they had been misplaced and then um, they came back out and um, family gave them to me. And, and um, the book will come out next year. I can't wait for it. It, it was a fascinating thing, subject to, to research. And, and I worked with not only his, his um, one side of his family, but I, I, we worked with his nieces and some of his other family. So the family was, was involved with this project. And very recently, I was able to get some of Forrest Goose's item. Now, Forrest Goose was not portrayed as much in the series, but he is responsible for some amazing items, um, na namely photography. He, he snuck a camera um, into the combat zone in Normandy, and they weren't allowed to do that. But um, one of the items I got just recently, we haven't put this out yet, was his 1911. Wow. And this is a true D-Day and World War II used weapon. This was used on D-Day by Forrest Guth. And we know that because he documented as being his weapon that he used all through World War II. And he took these series of photos I was telling you about. But you can see it in this famous photo here. And also there's a bunch of other photos. This is a book done by Michel Dutrez about Forrest. But in almost all the Normandy photos, you can see Forrest wearing the 1911 in a shoulder rig. There it is right here at the, at, uh, the Marmion farm. But um, probably the most iconic photo from Band of Brothers is of course the famous photo taken in St. Marie de Mont that was used on the cover of the book Band of Brothers. And of course, um, 
I'm not able to find it, but if you want to pan up to there, yeah. that is the photo. Forrest Guth is in that photograph, and he is on the far left of the first row. And um, this is one of Forrest Guth's negatives. Uh, we have some of them, and Michel Dutrez, the guy that wrote the book, has the rest of them. But this is the original negative of this photo, and it's kind of hard to see, but I'll just put it, put it up there so you can kind of see it. But that was in his camera. That is the original of probably the most iconic Band of Brothers photo out there. And um, we, we got a bunch of his, and I, I just thought it would be nice to show a couple other items that you don't normally get to see you know um like i said we're going to do this big expansion in the next year but i pulled a couple of items out of the archive um that we have and th this is one of the famous color slides of easy coming you got bill garnier and james deal here and that was at um camp mccall and that's a color chrome an original this isn't colorized this is a real color photograph and that's the original. Here's a famous photo that was taken on the, at the beginning of the march to Tekoa. And this is 3rd Platoon of Easy Company. And this is a true original. Nice large format. And you see some of the familiar faces in there. Frank Perconte. And um, this is the original or one of several originals made off of the original negative. And this, this came from Dick's Files. And um, <clears throat> this one is another really iconic photo and um, this one was taken in Austria in 1945 and I want to pull it out because it has a really great back stamp so when they were in Cape Prune in Austria uh, a local photographer came out and took this photograph and this was the remaining guys of Easy Company and you can see a couple of the iconic faces there you know you got Babe Heffron right there and um, Ron Spears is in there somewhere right there and this man here that's grabbing the tip of the guide on, that's Brad Freeman. He's the last surviving guy in this photograph. And uh, he lives down in Mississippi and he's a good friend of mine. I, just, I was just FaceTiming with him yesterday and I went to see him very recently. So um, this is the iconic last formation photo and it was taken by a local photographer um, in... in uh, Salzburg who came out to photograph those guys. This is signed by a few of the men and this belonged to one of the Easy Company soldiers named Tex Hale. His name's right there. Huh. And he wrote, with the gang. <laughs> so this is an original, another iconic Easy Company photo that, you know, it doesn't get shown a lot in its original form. It's all yeah. over the internet, of course. And, uh, you know, we have other Easy Company stuff in here but most of it's put away but as i said we're building a massive exhibit that will be uh focusing on easy company but i have to do a little plug for the book <laughs> this is the book i was talking about based on dick winter's letters and there's also photographs of some of the artifacts in here so i hope you uh get the book and check it out and uh, read dick winter's letters it's a whole different side of dick winter's that you're not used to hearing he corresponded with the navy wave and um there was over a hundred letters and it's just just an amazing account and um, I was glad you know when we got those letters we thought I got to do something with them and I thought a book would be really a, a great way to showcase them. All right uh, well anytime I get the opportunity to actually get my hands on a historical piece uh, I want to take a take advantage of that so Eric is allowing me to uh, put my hands on the personal firearm of Dick Winters. Wow. This is something special that you have. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is, that is something else. Thank you. Sure. All right, well, uh, that was a little bit from the Dick Winters collection and Easy Company collection here at the Gettysburg Museum of History. Uh, again, like I've said in the other videos, I, I haven't showed a fraction. There's, there's no way. Uh, you have to come here for yourself. It's free. Uh, Eric has, has collected and gathered up all of this stuff, has, has displayed it, 
and, and wants to share it because he's like all of us. He, he's passionate about history. Uh, this, this place is like no other. So if you come to Gettysburg, make sure that this is definitely one of your stops.